Hi Disney friends, it's Amber with Mickey Travels and today I'm back to talk to you about the Fast Pass Plus system at Disney World. Disneyland is still using the paper Fast Passes, but Disney World has now transformed their entire Fast Pass system to their new Fast Pass Plus. So I'm going to talk to you about how that has changed and how to use them and how to get them and then maybe some strategies. First off, Disney used to do the Fast Pass system to where you would arrive at an attraction and if the lines were long, you could go up to the Fast Pass machines, insert your ticket, and then have a printout that would tell you what time you could return. Now, Disney has changed so that all their attractions have, that have Fast Passes, you can go online to the My Disney Experience site and get your Fast Passes ahead of time. Now, you get the difference between this is with the old Fast Pass system, you could strategize around the parks and um, like go to Splash Mountain, get a fast pass there, and the go do other things, come back and do the fast pass, and then go back and get another one. And you could do tons of fast passes throughout the day. With this new system, you do now have a limit to the first three that you can pre, I guess, register for. You get three to start out with, and then now they have updated it to where after you use those first three, you can visit a kiosk in the Disney parks and get an additional one to use and then after that continually get one additional one after the first after that new one has been used. <clears throat> so, how do you get these fast passes? Let's take a look at my computer screen so I can show you exactly where to go on the My Disney Experience site to get your fast passes. Here we are on the Disney World site at www.disneyworld.disney.go.com and this is where you will have your vacation package, your tickets, whatever you are linking to the Magic Bands, you will find here. And you can do so by clicking in this corner where it says My Disney Experience. And actually, this little Mickey Mouse symbol is what you'll be looking for when you're going to be using your Fast Passes. There will be two lines. One line will be for standby entrance where you were waiting in line, and the other will be for Fast Passes and then you'll scan your band and the cast member will let you through. So here is where you will link your reservations. Um, I have another video you can view if you need some assistance with that. But we are going to click on Fast Passes and make some selections. Disney has updated the Fast Pass website since the last time I made a video over how to make selections and how to use this whole website. So there may be a little differences here between this and the other video I made. You'll have three choices. You can have new Fast Pass selections, update some old ones, or cancel some previous ones. So we're going to go ahead and click on New Fast Pass Plus. You'll then see a screen where you select all the people who will be using your Fast Passes that day, and more than likely it'll be everyone. Now there are some ways that you can adjust to where only two people have a Fast Pass, and the maybe if you have four in your party, the other two will you go to another attraction. Um, that takes a little bit of tweaking, but I would be happy to help you with that if you are needing assistance with that as well. And again, another perk with a travel agent. Alright, so here are our four parks. Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Disney's Hollywood Studios, and Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park. And here is our month of December. And we will be arriving on the 15th, and we are going to be departing on the 20th. So let's start with the Magic Kingdom park, for instance. We will click on our day. Alright, so we've decided to go to Magic Kingdom and we are looking at our choices here. And sometimes if you are picking a Fast Pass maybe at a later time, some of the Fast Passes will be gone. And you'll see this red mark here that tells me that they have ended giving them out for that day. Uh, the ones that typically go very quickly are these parades. Uh, Anna and Elsa go very fast. In fact, I have been up late at night with, for clients to make sure they do get this one. And Seven Dwarfs Mine Train tends to go very quickly now, too. So I'm going to select my three choices, and I will hit the Next button, and it will then take me to a screen that will let me choose the times I want to make those selections. So speaking of being able to get into getting your Fast Passes early and making sure you get the choices you want, you can make Fast Pass Plus selections if you are staying on the Disney property, 
60 days in advance. If you are not staying on Disney property, it is 30 days in advance to make your Fast Pass selections. So there is another perk to staying on property. You do get the Fast Passes sooner than other guests who will be going. So we've selected Big Thunder, Space Mountain, and Peter Pan's Flight. And Peter Pan's Flight, although it's a very short attraction, it is a classic. And for some odd reason, the lines are crazy long, especially in peak seasons for this attraction. So if some things are out and I know they're going to want to do this attraction, I do select this for guests, especially if they're going to be going to Magic Kingdom more than once. So here are some options. We can, if we want to change our minds, we can click Change Experience. If we want to change the times it did give us, we can select New Times. There was a window in between these two that allowed you to choose four different choices when it came to time selections. One of them said option one, two, and three, or A, B, and C, and best choice. Now, you can click any of those, and I normally pick the one I know is going to be closer to what I want. I tend to tell clients to arrive to the parks early and take afternoon breaks and then head home. So I'll pick ones that have in the morning. You do not have to stick with the times that it gives you. You can actually click select new time, and it will give you a pull-down menu with different choices for you to pick. After everything looks good, we'll click close on the bottom and it will take us back to our main menu. So you've already got your three fast passes ready to go for all the parks. How do you use them? Well, using the app, you can tell what time you need to go visit that attraction and you have an hour span to use it. So once you arrive at the attraction, there will be little Mickey ears on a device where you will put your magic band up next to it and all your fast passes will automatically be loaded to your magic band if you've linked your account. You'll just set your arm next to the Mickey Mouse device and it will let you in. And it's very very simple. When we went this past summer we didn't have any problems with fast passes. In fact we had a ride that was broken down while we were there and we had a fast pass for it and a few hours later on our My Disney Experience app it gave us an additional fast pass to use any time during that day because the attraction was broken down. So we really appreciate Disney for doing that. It was uh, the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, so it was one of the most important ones we wanted to make sure we rode. And they were really good about giving us a free fast pass for any ride we wanted to use at the park that day. We, of course, used it for the Mine Train, but it was neat that Disney recognized that the attraction was broken down and updated our fast passes for us. So what rides have a fast pass? That is where it gets a little tricky because not all attractions at Disney World have fast passes. They are actually broken down sometimes at the parks into tiers. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back into the My Disney Experience app and go to all the fast pass selections for each park so you can see your choices and I'll give you some recommendations on some musts for your fast pass selections. Let's take a look at each park to see the choices you have when it comes to making your Fast Pass selections. They are in alphabetical order, and Magic Kingdom does have the most, and there are no tiers here. So I'll just scroll through to let you take a look at some of the choices. My recommendations, especially during peak seasons, which include summer and holiday seasons, would be Big Thunder Mountain, Disney's Festival Fantasy Parade, Enchanted Tales with Belle, Oh, this is nice. It's sometimes if you are, want to make sure that the ride you're going to want to do is going to be open, it will let you know if they will not be open so you don't have to choose that Fast Pass. Mad Tea Party is not necessarily a choice you need to make because the lines are going to be short that day. Main Street Electrical Parade in the peak seasons has two showings, so unless this is a must-do for you, this isn't necessary as well. Anna and Elsa is a must. In fact, these run out very quickly. These lines have got shorter since the Anna and Elsa experience, so these aren't necessarily needed. Tinkerbell is a nice addition. Um, Mickey and all of his friends can be seen at a really great experience at Epcot, which has a Fast Pass selection. Peter Pan's Flight can be crowded. Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Space and Splash Mountain. And I think that's it. Oh, Wishes, 
the fast pass location for this is a great spot to see the fireworks and this one goes very quickly too. Uh, you can get in a designated area with the fast pass. That's the plus with it. Um, if it says close for refurbishment, more than likely on the day that I selected, they're actually having the Christmas holiday party, Mickey's uh, Very Merry Christmas party. So that's why it says closed on that. <clears throat> Epcot can be a little more complicated because they do have two tiers that you choose from. Up here it says select up to one from this group, and our choices include Illuminations, the Nighttime Fireworks Show, Living with the Land, which is a drive through experience at some of the cool things they grow on the property, Soren and Test Track. Unfortunately, these two are probably the most sought out attractions at Epcot, so you will only get to pick one, and I always suggest to my clients to arrive to the park early and get in line for the one you did not get a fast pass for. They are both excellent. Soren, in my opinion, will have a longer line. Test Track is more for the thrill seekers. So it just depends on which one you think your family will want to do. We love Soren because of the effects, but we also love Test Track because it's really cool. So on our second tier, you can pick up to two. And unfortunately, these are not excellent choices because a lot of these rides are walk-on rides. You should not use your Fast Pass for Captain EO or Imagination with Figment. I do recommend getting the Disney Pals at Epcot Character Spot because the lines do get very crowded for this and you get to see multiple characters just in one line. Mission Space is a thrill ride, but they also have a line for that is less of a thrill thing. It is kind of tight quarters, so claustrophobia might be an issue, but it is a good fast pass choice. Turtle Talk and Nemo not, aren't necessarily great choices, but again, you don't have a lot of choices here. So if you need to make one or the other, I would probably pick the C's with Nemo. We used a Fast Pass for Turtle Talk, and it didn't make any difference where we were at when it came to using our Fast Pass if we would have just been in the standby line. Disney's Hollywood Studios is also tiered. Your first tier, you can select one. And Rock and Roller Coaster and Toy Story Mania are both in this tier. By just looking at this, you can probably assume that Toy Story Mania will be the one that runs out faster. Rock and Roller Coaster has a single rider line to where if you are with your family and you don't mind riding separate, the line for just single riders is a lot shorter. This would also be a good one to go to in the morning because most people run to Toy Story. So I, I suggest getting the Toy Story Fast Pass or Rock and Roller Coaster on this. Great movie ride is a walk on. Fantasmic has many options for great viewing, so this isn't necessarily needed. And Beauty and the Beast will not need a Fast Pass either. Tier 2, we can select two from here. And the Frozen Scene Along is a selection that you would, might want to use. Um, the rest are shows, which don't really have a whole lot of lines, but Twilight Zone Tower of Terror is another great one to use, and probably Star Tours. Those lines tend to be longer than any other choices that are in our selections here. Animal Kingdom does not have tiers, and you can choose from a few options, there aren't as many here as there are at the other parks just because Animal Kingdom does not have as many attractions. So my suggestions would be for most of the thrill rides. Dinosaur, Expedition Everest, and the Safari I like to suggest to clients. And I also suggest to ride this maybe more than once just because animals end up being in different locations. The Disney Pals at the Outpost is also a nice one, and Cali River Rapids, if it is in the summer, I would do this one over the safaris because the line for that would be very crazy. Primeval Whirl is insanely jerky, and it's a really cool ride one time, but it spins you in all sorts of directions. And it's weird that the height requirement for that small roller coaster is actually taller than Expedition Everest, just because it is so crazy. But that line is very short, so I don't think you will need a fast pass for that either. Don't have someone by your side to help you make those fast pass selections. It is really good to have a travel agent, especially us at Mickey Travels. We're really good about being there right next to you, maybe not literally, 
helping you make these decisions. In fact, with most of my clients, uh, they just let me know some of the priorities they have and then they allow me to go in and make their selections for them because they know I have you know, expertise on some things, but at the same time, I want them to be sure that they're getting the rides that they want. If they're not a thrill ride enthusiast, then I make sure to not include some of those roller coasters. Um, character meet and greets are important. You have fast pass selections for those too. So that's another benefit of having a Disney travel agent because we can be there to help you adjust your uh, fast passes. Because there's other things to think about too besides is this an attraction I'll want? Is this going to be an attraction that's worth the fast pass? Is this going to conflict with a parade? Is this going to conflict with my dining reservation? So again, we're just there to help. It's very handy. My services are free. If you've seen my other videos, you know, but I appreciate those of you who have contacted me, but just a little plug there for myself. So anyway, back to the fast passes. So we've seen how to get them on the site. We've seen the different attractions you can use them for. And I've talked a little bit about how you use them. So after you use the first three, again, I said you will go to a kiosk. There will be a cast member there. They will have an iPad and you will have a screen where you can just click and choose. Uh, since we go in the peak seasons because of my other job as a teacher, I can only go during the summer. We had very limited choices when it came to our additional fast passes. So it is a good idea to make sure you get your top attractions the first time around because they will be very limited when you do start to make your additional ones. A question I get often is about what if I'm a park hopper and you are going to be visiting two parks that day? You need to make sure that you for the first three fast passes, it's going to be the first park you're going to, unless you have a strategy where you're just going to be dining at that first park and then riding rides at the other. But you cannot make additional fast passes for another park until you arrive there. For example, if you wanted to make only two at Magic Kingdom and one at Epcot, that is not possible. You'll have to do all three at whatever park you're going to be at first, then travel to the new park to get that additional fast pass. If you don't use all your fast passes, what happens? Well, you'll lose them. That's about it. If you are going to be running back to your hotel to do some swimming just because it's hot and you're just really tired and you have a fast pass that afternoon, that's fine if you skip it. Once your hour passes, they will expire. And even though you didn't use that fast pass, you can still get an additional one after that one has expired. So again, it's not a huge deal if you do skip them but it's a good idea to try to utilize and make sure that you're using those three because again those are probably going to be the best attractions and if you have long lines all day then you're going to miss out thanks for watching today i hope you're all having a great holiday or if you're watching this later whatever you may be doing that you're enjoying these videos that i'm giving to you guys uh, feel free to comment below for any questions you have if you're interested in my free services or if you have video suggestions, I'd love to hear those. Uh, thanks for subscribing for those of you who have. I'm enjoying doing these videos. I have a long list of new ones I'll be getting out very soon. So I will see you all really soon. Have a magical day. Bye.